Welcome back, class. We're going to talk about the se in the second component. We're going to talk about receiving feedback through listening. And, and I don't think that the authors can, I don't think they, or any um, leadership guru, stresses enough the importance of listening and communication. It, and they, the authors jump into him. They start talking about a good listener, you know, implies good feedback receiver. So if you're a good listener and, and especially, and when you think about listening, most, I guess, leadership gurus talk about listening on the receiving end. It's also important to listen and to focus on the, uh, on the giving end because you want to sit there and, and I've always liked to look at, you know, facial expression, eye, you know, you know, connection, uh, body language when I'm doing evaluations, because I think it's all extremely important. And I can't remember what chapter we were talking about earlier, like, you know, and I can't even remember the exact phrase, but they talk about, you know, when you're listening, avoiding distractions and, and being in the here and now. So um, I think that is a, extremely important when you're either giving or receiving feedback. I think as, as again, they talk about takes two to tango. It's a two way street, but, and they may be, you know, you, you kind of listen to it, you read that and you think, you know, what, you know, what BS, I mean that, but it is, it, it, it's just their anecdotal ways of trying to hammer home the importance of it both the leader and the follower, the giver and the receiver being on the same page and focused and listening and communication and how important it is. And as you go down through the through the text and you're and you're reading through it, which I hope most of you are, it, you know, they talk about listening actively. Um, and again, they talk about eye contact and they talk about occasionally nodding like you're taking in the information. It helps develop that. Uh, communication and that connection uh, between the giver and the receiver of the feedback. Um, and it also, as you're, you know, when they talk about listening actively, they talk about ask probing, clarifying questions to get a better understanding of what is being communicated. And there, and I think it's in, in this section that they talk about avoid distractions. Uh, they refer to it as mindfulness. But I've had over the years, individuals that I had an in, an individual that um and I've mentioned it I think before you know this individual always had two laptops always had two cell phones had a work laptop and a personal laptop a work cell phone a personal cell phone and constantly on those um technology you know devices whatever you know terminology you want to use and it was extremely distracting and distracting and you could be in an evaluation with this individual and you could tell when you were losing connection with them because all of a sudden they've got the phones out and they're playing with the phones. You'd have to tell them, said, you know, put the phone away. This is your evaluation. I'm trying to help you uh, understand your potential for improvement and extremely distracting. And so um, you, you'll have to be when you, when you're in an evaluation and working and, and trying to provide feedback uh just make sure that and what i started doing you know because of this individual i just started when we would have these evaluation of these coaching sessions they left everything at the door you know and it didn't matter whether it was a cell phone or whether it was a laptop it was just left at the door and then the next thing they talk about is is learn more and speak less and that's where they get into the negative feedback and and when you're giving when you're giving negative feedback and and again I try not to go the route of a negative as much as you know opportunities for improvement or see you've missed some goals and you know here's some things we might try to ensure that we get back on track with goals one of the first things I would get, you know, well, it's excuses. It's, you know, counter information. It's, well, I didn't get get it done because of, of so-and-so. And so I've been in healthcare for <clears throat> a, a significant number of years. And a lot of the work that I've done, it's um, either on the medical informatics side or payment integrity or network management, but especially on the, the medical informatics side, one of the 
first excuses I'd get if, if they were missing deadlines on reporting or, or generating information is like, well, IT wouldn't give me access to information or the information was flawed. And I had to spend, I mean, just excuse after excuse. And that's that's where they're they're talking about learn more and speak less. And I've even had individuals, they say, you know, the textbook talks about don't talk over others. I've had individuals get in an evaluation or a discussion where we were on a particular project. And, you know, they're just, I'm trying to talk to them and they're just talking right above me, just talking over me, just won't let me get a word in edgewise because they get so defensive. Um, and the, 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 text, the text talks about... Um, Show respect by holding one's fire, and I think that is, I think that's a good um, nugget to to take from this. Whether you're whether you're a giver or a receiver of feedback, I think it's important to to take it, you know, take it slow, take it one step at a time, and it's you know, try to have as much information to pass on. If you, especially if you're the giver of feedback. Have as much information to pass on that is informationally driven, that is backed up by information. And they will get into it a little later, but they talk about, you know, avoiding hearsay. That's that's come up a time or two in the text. But what what I found that works well for me, and and again, being in healthcare, a lot of um, the goals and the, the vision that I've developed over the years, especially the goals. I try to make the goals, you know, definitive, um, you know, binary, you know, black and white, um, however you want to look at it, because it, it's easier to keep people on track or to help people stay on track and to help people move and improve if you've got goals that are measurable and definitive. Um, you, we, you know, there's an example. We need to um, improve customer satisfaction by. 15% and you've got the metrics and you either improve by 15% or you don't. And if, if individuals have those goals and their definitive goals in front of them, it's a lot easier for, to help them stay on track and to help them improve. And especially if you're talking about in a leadership position that you've got directors and managers and supervisors, you know, reporting to you, you not only you have definitive goals for the, for, for them, but you want to help them develop definitive goals for their teams too. So it just makes the whole uh, giving and receiving feedback, it, it makes it a lot uh, more palatable for everybody concerned. And then kind of lastly, in this listening piece, they, they talk about and avoid quick judgments. And, uh, uh, you know, you're, you're talking about avoid quick judgments about the feedback provider. So, um, and then I'd say probably the feedback giver, but you, you don't want to, as if you're receiving feedback, you don't want to be the individual thinking, okay, did, you know, my supervisor's giving me feedback, you know, what's the ulterior motive? Are they trying to lay me off? Are they trying to fire me? Are they trying, you know, do they not like me? Um, motives, you know, and be careful about what you think or your perceptions of the motives and behaviors of others. And you want to look behind or look beyond judgments and attributions. And that's something we'll get into a little later on. But giving feedback as a leader, it's it, the key activity as a leader is giving feedback. And the feedback relates to coaching. So this is where you have to um, be ready to when you're giving feedback. And, and as I said earlier in, in, in one of the in one of our videos, that's one of the shortfalls that that many leaders have when it comes to giving feedback is they give the feedback and they run out of time or they run out of hours in the day to develop an improvement plan to um, set aside some additional goals that you'd like to see done. So let's say you're giving an evaluation in quarter two of your fiscal year. And you know there's opportunities and whoever you're giving the feedback to may not be on track to meet their goals, but they've got two more quarters to get their goals and meet their goals and, you know, and get a very positive evaluation. And it's up to you as a leader to develop that coaching style that you, you allocate the times to sit down with these individuals and say, okay, here's, here's where I see that I can help you 
to meet your goals. And I think that if we do this, this, and this by these particular timelines, that will definitely hit your goals. And I found over the years that that is an extremely a successful approach in trying to help individuals meet their goals or help individuals move forward and develop themselves. Uh, challenges when delivering feedback. Uh, again, it, it takes, the, they keep talking about it takes two to tango, uh, involve both leaders and followers. And this is where they get into the communication media. And they talk about communication and it's, you know, it's face to face, it's, it's uh, text, it's chat, it's email, it's Zoom, it's Teams. Uh, I think there was one more on there. They actually, I tend to forget about it, but it's phone. So different types of, of chat or different types of communication media. And they spend a, a fair amount of time kind of walking through, you know, what is the most appropriate uh, you as a leader and uh, and especially um, I've noticed it with with leaders and, and teams, you know, once COVID pandemic hit. So you started seeing it in early what 2020 when the, the pandemic really ramped up in that Q1 in 2020 and a lot of companies shut down and sent employees to work from home. And it was a huge challenge. And um for those individuals that were impacted by COVID-19 and trying to run a business and trying to be leaders and trying to keep teams focused and hit goals. It, it was a struggle for some people because they weren't used to it. I mean, fortunately, um, I had worked for enough companies that were national in scope that you had teams scattered not only all across the United States, but you may have teams, you know, some teams scattered globally. And when you think about the United States, so um, when I went out at United, when I worked at, at, at United, I worked out of a remote office in California. The corporate office was in Minneapolis. We had regional offices, you know, from the, you know, at least in the healthcare book of business that I worked in. It was more the, the Medicare Advantage space, but we had uh, regional offices from the East Coast all the way to Hawaii. So here I'm, I'm sitting in California. So for me to be up and ready to go for somebody on the East Coast, I had to be up in the morning at five o'clock because, you know, three hours behind in San Diego. So I'm up ready to go at five o'clock and I'm still working eight, nine o'clock at night because you know, the region office in Hawaii was, you know, three, three hours behind us. So you, you, you found yourself learning to, to manage teams and to, to help individuals through coaching and, and mentorship, helping them become more productive individuals and some individuals helping them climb that corporate leadership ladder and you learn to use the phone. You learn to use email. You learn to use some type of visual conferencing type of solution. Um, and I think I was prepared for that when, when I was a graduate student at Ohio State. We were just, you know, if you're not familiar with, you know, with the Ohio State system in, in, in the state of Ohio, they've got branch campuses scattered around. Main campus is Columbus, but you've got all these branch campuses scattered around where individuals can take, you know, first couple of years of courses and then matriculate into the main campus. And as a teaching assistant in graduate school, I would, you know, providing remote access and remote classroom settings uh, to these branch campuses. And, you know, it was kind of archaic, especially compared to what we've got now with Teams and Zoom and all of these other types of communication. But you know, and you would, you'd be talking and there was like a, you know, a couple of second difference between your lips moving and the voice. It, it was not perfect, but at least it started getting those of us in the graduate program used to doing some type of work. So economic research service, you know, USDA all over the United States, you know, health net, Aetna, United Health Group, all, all national companies. So you learn how to to work with different types of communication media to to manage your teams as you go forward. 
And the media depends on the nature of the communications of the feedback. And they're most concerned, they talk about the richness of the communication. Does the medium and the richness of the medium that you're using, as far as which communication medium you're using, does it match the nature of the feedback? Does it convey the information and take into account emotions? And that's where that my personal, <clears throat> um, I guess, media uh, communication has always been face-to-face. -face. I like the eye contact. Uh, I like the body language. I like to watch, you know, the expressions on your face. You can still get some of that um, through Zoom and through Teams. Uh, they talk in the text about, you know, phone is just a good way to to clarify and and you know to me and and I'm speaking as both a leader and a follower I am I would I would rather use kind of in this order face to face zoom teams the phone um the last communication media that that is is lowest on my list has always been and probably always will be chat email text <clears throat> it's easy to do it's expedient, it's quick, you can get your information out the door in a hurry, but sometimes you get in too big of a hurry and you don't think through it, and you don't have the opportunity to <clears throat> convey some of the, or you don't have the opportunity to experience some of the nuances that you can experience through, again, phone, face-to-face, -face, Zoom, Teams, those, those types of, of, of media. Um, and yeah, they you know they've they've talked a couple of times in uh, the the text about um, emotions uh, should not be ignored but embraced. And if you want to have a media that adequately deals with emotions or contentious matters. And that's to me that's where it really gets um, that's that's the crux of it. That's the importance of selecting the right media. It's it's the emotions and and the um, especially if it's a contentious matter. <clears throat> if it if it's a really contentious matter, I make every effort possible to be able to look and to be able to talk to somebody either face-to-face -face or through Zoom or, or Teams. Um, and they talk about, they've got a list of recommendations if you read through the text. Um, if it's contentious, if it's complex, if it's negative, if it's full of emotion, you know, phone or face-to-face -face is the best. Um, as again, I'd probably put phone below Zoom and, and Teams, but I'd always, in something like in a situation like that, I always like to do it face to face. If you use email, uh, use an appropriate subject line and keep it short, concise, and to the point. If you don't use an appropriate subject line, because if you just think of the email traffic you get on a daily basis. You know, I get hundreds of emails on a daily basis. And if, if it's not an appropriate subject line, I may glaze past it. I may glaze over it and, and not even realize I've received the email. So make sure you've got that appropriate subject line. If it's email or texting, um, not working well in terms of results, go back to the phone. Because again, to me, when you're talking about email or texting, it's hard to get the nuances into uh, what you can put in a text or what you can put in an email. <laughs> And then they go into one I really like. They talk about be careful with information in an email or to, in a text for that matter, because it can end up in unintended hands. And I have seen, I don't know how many individuals, you know, peers or, or individuals that I've reported to, you know, get want to get something off their chest. It's a knee jerk reaction. They shoot out an email and then it's like, oh boy. Because the next thing they know, their HR is, you know, knocking on the door and said, hey, did you send this email? I said, what in the world possessed you to send out this email? So be really careful when it comes to emails and texts. So I really like the fact that they they get into there. And, and then they talk about the knee-jerk reactions and to think carefully before hitting send. And then lastly, and it's one that I think, this is one, I, I don't hear this much, because they talk about the relationship that you have with the individual that uh, that you're either giving or receiving feedback with. So um, 
most of the individuals I've reported to in the past, I've always had a good relationship with them. And we've been able to get by with doing phone conversations, doing some emails, you know, doing some text. It, it works out well. I've had in the past a few individuals that reported directly to me that I've had that kind of relationship with. You could you could send them out an email and you were both somewhat on the same wavelength and they just could take your email to you send them and just run with it and go with it, never an issue. And then I've had others that just, they they would fight you tooth and nail <clears throat> over a text or an email. And that's going to kind of wrap it up with the listening part and, and the communication and the media selection part. And we're going to come back in a few minutes and talk about judgments and attributions. And also, uh, I think on the judgments and attributions, uh, we'll kind of wind it up with uh, a 360 degree feedback, which I've experienced in multiple companies, some companies it works well in, other companies it doesn't. I think um, a lot of the 360 feedback depends on the HR departments and how they are managing the process. But again, come back in a few minutes and talk about judgments and attributions. Thanks for joining and talk to you in a few minutes.